Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, despite all they have been through, all they have lost, I believe it or not, almost all the survivors of the Grenfell Tower fire are still waiting for somewhere new and suitable to live. Fourteen families had been found and accepted permanent homes three weeks after the fire. Tonight it will be eight weeks and the figure remains at 14. Of those who once called this tower home, the dead are still being identified. And while the living mourn, they are still uncertain as to where they might one day begin again. Sabah Abdullah lost his wife, Khadija, in the fire. He's been living in a hotel room ever since. It's indescribable unless people, they should try it, and then they find out what it is to live in one room and you don't know what's your, uh, what, what's your future would be. What's going to... You don't know what's going to be... Uh, next day, next month, next week. Eight weeks after the disaster, only 14 families have been rehoused, a figure that hasn't changed in over a month. Yet according to the Grenfell Tower response team, all 176 households identified as needing a new home have been offered one, at least on a temporary basis. Of those, just 48 have accepted. Promises were made and targets were set in the immediate aftermath of the disaster. But in that most urgent job of finding new homes for the people who survived the fire but lost everything, progress is desperately slow. The response team says that in many cases, traumatised families need to take time to decide where they want to relocate and that they can only move as fast as the families want to go. Some residents have told us that they're fearful of accepting unsuitable temporary accommodation and being stuck there permanently. This rehousing operation is marked by an absence of trust. Geraint Vincent, News at 10. I've been